Hello and welcome to the Ghost Train, the spooky podcast thing that a number of us do. I'm Jacob. I'm Tom. Oh, I'm Toby. So I don't know which, which order we're doing in. I'm Gemma. <laughs> and together we are the, the Power, Puff Power Rangers Zeo. Oh. Uh, originally called the Zeo Rangers, but they changed it last minute. Which is why the theme song doesn't really work now let's crack on today's theme is found footage we're going to be talking about a bunch of found footage movies and telling you our opinion on them we watched four for this uh, podcast we'll probably briefly touch on some others as well so um the the whole it's a really interesting subgenre of, of film basically the whole idea uh, as i'm sure you're aware is finding footage it's taking a video or film uh, that was sort of discovered a- after uh, usually uh, tragic event piecing it together um the widely considered the first found footage film is uh, cannibal holocaust which is a uh, half found footage and half um standard narrative filmmaking that uh, was an interesting film but i sort of hate it and the last broadcast was a big one in the 90s um that i uh, is just a terrible bore that hasn't aged very well yeah. <laughs> um, so the first film we're going to be talking about today is the blair witch project now Personally, I really like it. Before we get everyone's feedback, I'll just talk a little bit about the story in case you're one of the few people who hasn't seen The Blair Witch Project. I think if you're a younger person, maybe it passed you by. Uh, You are too young for it when it came out. The Blair Witch Project is a faux student film. It's it's, uh, found footage, of course, as everything we'll be discussing today is either found footage or documentary style, a mockumentary. And this film is all about a group of uh, kids. They go out to... uh, do a documentary on something called the Blair Witch, which is a supposed urban legend in this little town uh, called Burkittsville. Now, what's interesting is that the Blair Witch uh, legend does not exist. It was something they made up for the film. And yet, the marketing, everything about the film, suggested that it was a real urban legend. And the actors... As with Cannibal Holocaust, were instructed not to do any press afterwards. So they really sold the idea it was real. Uh, the marketing was very uh, very viral, very aggressive, uh, really one of the great examples of an early internet uh, marketing campaign. And I think it's a really cool movie. So we're going to go around and we're going to grab people's uh, thoughts on the film, and I'll give mine as well. Uh person I'm really interested in hearing their thoughts actually is Tom, because uh, as with when we did the uh, monster movies, you are the youngest member of the team. So of course you probably don't remember when life looked like this movie, when everything was in four, everything was four by three and like four eighty p. So, how did you feel about the Blair Witch Project? I really enjoyed it for what it was. I think for um, what it was for what it was. And um, one thing I actually did for this, I I spoke to a few people around my age about the Blair Witch Project, and I think every single one of them didn't really find it that scary. And I can kind of get why I think, and I think. I, I, I obviously can't speak for the the caliber of films at the time, but I would probably say, at least from my perspective, that what makes it really stand out and be really scary is that it's very, very, very believable, and that kind of adds an element of horror to it. And that like you'd probably leave the theater and think, oh my god, was that a, was that a real thing? So like at the time, like there hadn't really been been done, obviously from what from what I understand. So. I think from being somewhat spoiled myself a little bit from lots of horror films and the, I guess, kind of bleed off the Blair Witch Project a little bit, it didn't, I didn't find it very, very scary. But the experience of it is just, I don't know, it, it's like, it, it sounds, describing it like this sounds negative, but it feels a bit like you have a headache where you're watching, like the film is like a headache because it just gets more and more uncomfortable towards the end and there's no kind of break. It just sort of builds up and it builds up and it's, there's there's no like respite it's all just tension and people arguing and it's just you know it's very very uncomfortable so i just i really like that feeling and that's a feeling i don't think is really um uh, recaptured very much and at least not from a another film that i f- i feel i've seen i think that's what's really scary about it is that it's it's just so immersive like that like without i mean found footage it, it kind of is it's similar in the same vein but there's often like a lot of breaks a lot of cuts and the time and shifts and everything but with the Blair Witch Project it's although at a time obviously moves forward between the the scenes but it feels very condensed it's all in the same place and it's all yeah. building up and I think that kind of brings you into it a lot more and by the end you're like Christ what was that yeah and I mean I, I even got that just watching it at home like on a, on a streaming site 
I still kind of got that, and I really wish I could have actually seen it at the time, like coming out of the theatre and talking with people about it. But I, I really enjoyed it. Thought for what it was, it was very scary, and um, I think probably a bit underappreciated by my generation a little bit. Um, sounded very pretentious. No, but it is a very it is a product of its time, though. So yeah. it's not really that your generation is wrong, mm. but it's just that by its very nature, it comes yeah, across fairly it, dated. I guess it's the sort of thing that could only be done right once or only a few times because it, it loses its punch I guess like they couldn't make films like that over and over because people would eventually think oh it's just one of those again and they sure as heck can't make them now if you look mm. at the Blair Witch Project 3 which was sort of a <laughs> soft reboot it's absolutely awful yeah um, Toby what were your thoughts did you see it for the first time recently actually uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> let go. me spin you a tale of me <laughs> sitting there First time ever it's on my screen, right? So I'm sitting there about seven o'clock at night after school has gone to bed, but I'm just having it to do. Uh, and I put it on. And I was thinking, no, oh, it's not going to be too bad. The bit that really got me initially, everything was fine, blah, 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 all 90s, is when they start talking to the old woman in the village. And uh, yep. the... Where did they find that freak show? <laughs> I don't That's know. It's the scariest woman I've ever seen. I don't, know, I don't know what sort of woman that is, but oh my God, like she's very, I don't know, it seems like she's... she's been on all the drugs ever and she's just seen this thing that's going on but before that as well they interviewed this uh, this woman with a child yeah, whose yeah. child is then getting scared when they're talking about the legend which I was like okay that's even the fucking child's a diamond actor yeah. well that's just genuinely terrifying and it's um you know, it gets darker and darker and um the more they progress into the forest you realise that this hope's kind of fading from it, especially when uh, what's his name? One of them goes missing. Uh, Josh. Josh. Josh, that's it. And uh, the other guy's just going insane with them. It's quite... It's something to behold. And um, it is... There are genuine parts where it's just like, okay, what's that noise? You you hear you hear Josh, and then they wake up in the morning and then there's these stone piles outside of their house. And, well, tent even. And uh, yeah, it's it, it, it's horrible because could you imagine yourself in that situation? Mm. Like it would ruin camping. I think it did ruin camping for a lot of Americans back in the day because fuck camping after that. It Jesus actually Christ. put me off camping <laughs> yeah. for a bit because I used me and my be then best friend Alex when I saw it used to like to camp and it really put us off for a bit. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but it was um, with the movie itself uh, enjoyable. I'm very glad there is no jump scares. Uh, endings pre pre open ended in a way you sort of know they're all both dead. Um, if you listen to the legend and I love the way that they don't really tell you what's going on, they don't explain who the Blair Witch is. They just show you the house at the end. You see the stuff upstairs, and then you see him in the corner downstairs. Where if you know if you listen to what people were saying earlier in the movie, you know what that's about. And then yeah, yeah, the end. It's very clever. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Gemma, what did you think of the Blair Witch Project? I I loved it. I when you showed it to me for the first time a few years ago I thought that the f considering I I was around during the time of the marketing I just still was too young to have seen it so and and the bits that I, and I never got around to watching it and I only ever saw things like the parodies that you'd see in the scary movie yeah and all those types of films the old um, Cartoon Network Scooby-Doo things uh, the TV with spots it and, and yeah. everything like that yeah I, I'd seen all that so I thought that that was going to ruin my experience, but it definitely didn't. <laughs> so because I think and I even watched it the perfect way as well. I watched it on like I pirated it on an old laptop. Yeah, it's it a good just, way to watch it. It, it benefits from home video. Um, in like a really like in really really dark room, <laughs> and yeah, I I couldn't as I I couldn't I couldn't tear my eyes away from the screen, like I am. Um, yeah, the bit where you that you were saying with the kid and the oh, mum, yeah. I was just when he's like, she's like, he's like, no, 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 no. Uh, I was like, mm, mm, he's is... putting his hand over like yeah. a mouth. Yeah, I was like, what? That's and then the then the just, woman. That's not right. <laughs> no, I was like, that's not right, please. Um, you can put yourself in that moment of where you. I, I'm, I'm, you could put yourself in the, like back back in like nineteen ninety nine, watching the film, it was a for fight, the first I time, think. thinking. Like, like you know, thinking that this was that, that that this could be real, when like, and you can because it, because it is just very incredibly realistic. It's uh, like Heather and Josh and Mike all look all look like just normal regular people. That, yeah. And 
and they all have genuine chemistry with one another that you feel that they have been friends like for, like for a long time or at least with like with Josh or it's, it's Josh and her that's our friend like and, and yeah. Heather are the friends and Mike sort of like a friend of Josh's yeah. I think and then when Josh sort of leaves and or disappears and yeah you, you, you'd see Heather and Mike to try, to try to bond mm. in order to survive <clears throat> and I really like that I really like the way that I yeah, and, and there's there's their squabbles and their arguments they all seem really so they don't feel tacked on they feel natural in the yeah. progression of the, of the of the story and it just the tension just builds for the, for, for the moment they enter the like they, they, they enter the forest my personal um, friend it. sorry yeah sorry you go saying, on and i was just saying basically what i was saying is that up until they start they um up until this like when they start arguing and then when they start finding the strange things and the, the strange sort of like wooden dot like doll like Voodoo stuff. Voodoo, yeah. yeah. And one thing is, you start, you can start and you can, you can think to yourself, is this actually real? Is this, you know, is the Blair Witch real? And even, and then, like, by the end, you're just so sold on it that it can stay, it just stays with you right after. That you can't, it just doesn't leave you for a while. Mm. Um, and that's how I felt about it. I, I've absolutely adored it. And, since seeing it I, um, uh, twice more time now, now t- three times now uh, there's there's just more stuff that I see and more stuff that I've just noticed and I love it even more and it's funny enough that considering that was a completely made up uh, urban legend that it inspired other films like there's even I think there's like a, like a B-movie film a B-movie? <laughs> a B-movie film about about the Blair Witch, and uh, that's like set in the old days. That's got nothing to do with Blair Witch Project, like, like bro- the Blair Witch Project. It's just, yeah. Okay, fair enough. That's my thoughts. All I was gonna say when I was interrupting is my favorite argument they have is when Mike's just all like, you know, I'm supposed to be home, like, you, you know what I mean? And then he's just worried about that in the middle of this bloody forest. That's <laughs> That's what I feel like. You know, yeah, I'm supposed yeah. to be home. And I like that the, the arguments start out petty like that. Now, I'm not going to try not to ramble because we've got um, three more movies to talk about, but I've got quite a lot to say about The Blair Witch Project because I fucking love this film. Um, and I'm so glad you guys liked it as well because it is quite a polarising film and I was worried we were going to run into... Well, not worried because it can be interesting when we disagree, mm. but it's it just it's quite like validating for me. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. all these guys love this movie I love. Um, I I think I'm the only person in the room who saw it like years and years ago. I saw it in about 2002, 2003 on, on VA. HS. I went and bought it from a little shop called Price Buster. Uh, it used to sell them without a box in like, uh, but still in the wrap for a, about I think a pound fifty. So I picked up the Blair Witch Project, not really knowing what to expect. I'd heard it was very scary, and um, yeah, I thought it was brilliant. I think things it does very well are what you guys talked about—the realism. The way they do that, of course, there's a lot of great world building, like Toby was talking about, obviously, but there are some spoilers in this because, you know, it's an old movie if you haven't seen it. I'm going to try not to spoil the more recent films, but with this movie, we there, there are going to be spoilers. Um, the stuff they talk about with, um, you know, Rustin Parr and the, the, you know, how he would, couldn't take the eyes on him and things like that. And it's great because the more times you watch it, the more layers there are to the mystery. Now, in, the filmmakers intentionally made the mystery impenetrable. Mm-hmm. There is no right answer because there's all these like this other like, game theory, film theory type people like, oh, Josh did it. They're, they're like, and here's what I'm like, no, you're not supposed to understand it. That's the point mm-hmm. because there's a lot of l- gaps in logic that deliberately make no sense and are obscure and strange. So, for example, they say, oh, uh, these this was found in the wreck, you know, this, these tapes were found in the wreckage, the burned out wreckage of a house. But it's not a burned out wreckage. It's condemned, but it's still a house. In fact, in the marketing, in some of the marketing, they explain that um, there were layers of dust on the tapes that have been there since the 50s. And of course, the tapes only existed since the mid-90s. and things. So there's weird stuff like that that's supposed to not be explainable. There are a bunch of things I love. I love that we never see the Blair Witch. Yeah, One of my yeah. favourite moments is um is when the Blair Witch is seen by a character, but not by the audience. Mm-hmm. When they're running... And um, I'm getting goosebumps just remembering the moment yeah, when Heather just them. screams and she goes, "Oh my God, what is that? What the fuck is that?" Yeah, I'm and, getting them as well. Like, but we, the audience, don't get to see what it is. We just hear this blind screaming panic, and um, I think that's really good. 
Um, the film has a lot of great world building like that. You guys already talked about the wonderful moment. The moment where the kid... It was the same for me as well. Yeah. And when I saw it when I was about 12 or 13, when the little girl puts, keeps putting her hands on the mum's mouth. Yeah. And that was when I went... Oh, this is going to be scary. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's sitting there like, and then of course they go to the, 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 like the wooden um, door, like the wooden like gate that they pull, and they go to that. Like, so um, I think it's Mary Brown, is that her name? Mm-hmm. And she's so strange and creepy. Yeah, that's but, so yeah, everybody creepy. keeps giving them. I can tell you who I love the most though: the two fishermen. Oh, Those are the brilliant. best fucking char- side characters. <laughs> oh, they're yeah, they're, they're so good. Um, no, I absolutely loved it. I think I love the way the woods are a character in the film as well. It's um, it's great because not only like is it f- very realistic found footage because it's um they actually shoot it on like on film on, gro- on black and white film and on uh, video and it's real video. It looks very mm. grainy. Um, I like that the documentary segments are a bit naff and like not very well put together because yeah, it just right makes right. it feel a bit more real. Like the it feels very studenty the way Heather like reads the um. The sort of dramatic stuff, and it's a, her, her acting's a bit bad in those parts, but she's actually a great actress in the rest of the yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of feels like, oh, this is me when I'm acting, and it's crap, and the, you know, so it adds these extra layers of realism. There's a real sense of cosmic horror. I love cosmic horror. Yeah. And we're going to talk about it with another one of the movies when we're talking about. Um, but I love cosmic horror because it's this kind of these little people in this giant, terrifying situation mm. that's that's just that brings not only fear but despair. A yeah, sense of complete hopelessness, and in the Blair Witch Project, you they're lambs to the slaughter. You know at the beginning of the movie that they're dead, and you're just sitting there waiting for them to die. True. And this this one of the most horrifying parts of the film is not nothing scary happens. It's just they're walking. They've walked in a circle, and they've arrived back where they started. Yeah. Oh, what was she like? It's the same room. Yeah, and she just breaks down. Yeah, That's yeah. one of the most horrific parts of the film. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, I think there's a little moment as well where they they think it's like it's not the same log and it's like oh it's okay and then they, you realise it actually is and then it's like oh Christ yeah, no. she's trying to convince you <laughs> yeah it's, not it's almost Lovecraftian isn't yeah. it like, I think yeah. it's really really great but um, I think that's all we've got time for about the Blair Witch Project because we've got a bunch of other movies to talk about um, so after the Blair Witch Project a lot of people started making found footage movies because it was seen as kind of a cheap and easy way to make movies um, and so we're going to jump forward quite a, uh, 10 years Jump forward a decade to uh, 2009, and uh, there was a, a little movie that could uh, called Paranormal Activity, which um, did a lot of business, um, kind of reinvented the formula, very heavy on jump scares, uh, and it sucked, so that's all we're going to say about it. Instead, we're going to talk about Lake Mungo, which came Problem out the same Problem is, year. though, is that it's fucking so successful, that franchise, yeah. you know what I mean? How many so... did they make in the end? Six. Oh. Jeez. Six, six movies. I saw three of them in the cinema, and that was enough for me. They're dreadful. They're absolutely dreadful. Yeah. So, but there was a film that came out the same as the first one, which was really overlooked, called Lake Mungo, which of course we all watch for the podcast. I haven't seen the film uh, super recently. It was a couple of months back, so I'm going to be going from memory when I talk about it. But to the best of my memory, the, the storyline it's done in the documentary style, so more in that sort of cannibal holocaust style of two narratives where there are there's footage and um, the the other reality, whereas but instead of being sort of uh, fiction sort of um, standard f- uh, filmmaking it's done like a documentary and it's very realistic I think and the idea is that this girl died in very strange circumstances and the family are trying to deal with it mm. and they experience some sh- some strange and potentially paranormal things and we learn more and more about the family and the secrets and the things that were happening in this neighborhood in this little town it's very kind of Twin Peaks-esque uh, but it's uh, it's Australian, so everyone's got a slightly more funny accent than they would in in, in Twin Peaks. Um, and uh, yeah, I thought it was really cool. Uh, Tom, what did you think of Lake Mungo? Yeah, I really liked it. I think I, I do quite like uh, slower paced films, and it, it's it's definitely like that. And I think again, like the Blair Witch, another reason why I liked it is that it's very very believable. Like I don't think there was a moment in it where I thought, oh, these are actors. You know, like, it, it's so it's so. They're just, they're so, like, um, I, I don't, I can't remember if I've got this right, but I think there was very loose direction on what uh, the actors in it actually had. So it's, uh, when they were asked a question, it wasn't like they were very, very uh, prepared for it. Yeah, they didn't have the scripted answers. What they had was their emotions written down and okay. their feelings and relationships to each other, but not dialogue, apparently. Okay, that's interesting. Cause it, it feels very, very off the cuff and very real like that. And I like, so I mean, I'm quite skeptical all that stuff and they they, they address the uh, a lot of parts of it are um, fake and I, I, I like that uh, but it happens at a point in the film where you're like oh well 
is is this just saying the rest of it's not really going to be scary or we just debunk the whole thing like and it keeps keeps you interested for the rest of it because i think a lot of people like i don't know many people who've watched this film but i think a lot of them don't really like it because it's not very um you know like you're scared now it's it's very slow burning but i like that a lot and it makes it a lot more scary i think and um it's probably a bit of an abstract thought but at least um for me anyway i find it very scary um when you feel like the characters are somewhat safe. And I think like when, so when they're filming the documentary itself, it's like, well, they're in like a nice lit room and it's all fine. And they're just being filmed or whatever. Then you see some, I don't know, we're not gonna go into very many spoilers, I think. So there's some very, like a uh, very spooky imagery that comes up and it's shot all in the dark and everything. And it's uh, very terrifying. And then it's very juxtaposed with um, all the actors and all, well, all the actors, all the characters in like nice, uh, bright settings and stuff, and it's like when the film goes on, it's like, oh, I'm now in the dark, but and no one's here, and that's I remember what I I remember feeling that afterwards. It was it's like, really oh, interesting, yeah. Like, and I, fe I felt like I actually felt more so that I it's it sounds a bit stupid to say, but as someone who's not usually very um, strongly affected by films, I thought that I was a bit unsafe in it, and the characters are more safe than I was watching it. I don't know how that um, thought translates, but that's what I remember like directly after watching it. But um, yeah, I really liked it. I thought there were elements that were very, very spook. And um, for a, quite a realistic film, I thought he did it very, very well. Like nothing's over the top. It's all very grounded and I really, really like that. Yeah, I think it's actually quite beautiful when, when cinema can have those kind of strange effects on you that are mm. not quite tangible or explainable. Because it's it's you know it's film it's it's like a dream and uh, that's really cool. Toby, what did you think of Lake Mungo, which I think you watched today, didn't you? Yeah, I, did. I watched on today because um, I was like, fuck it, need to watch it because did a podcast today. Uh, <laughs> and I brought it on YouTube for two forty nine. So if you want to watch it, it's two forty nine. There you go. Uh, it's a two, it's an eleven year old movie. So why are we gonna, why are we bothering about spoilers? It's an eleven year old movie. You know. Right, well, we'll, anyway, we'll, we'll we'll try to try be, and be light with the spoilers, Toby. Yeah. Don't don't hammer anything well, too. Well, anyway. I didn't, I didn't rate it that much. Maybe that was because during the dark parts, when I was on the, when I was on the bus, I couldn't see. I, was, I found myself. You going, watching it on the bus? Yeah, because I've got no other fucking time to watch it. Why have I never seen it? But anyway, I watched it. I was like, what the fuck is that? Like, and they zoom in. I'm like. So what? if you're watching it in broad daylight on your phone, I feel like that's not the filmmakers at fault there. <laughs> that's true. That's true. It's like Game of Thrones. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was yesterday this episode. But I, you know, I did enjoy the uh, the whole. It wasn't a film that I was expecting it to be because of what the the, the, the sort of categories of films that Jake has been telling me to watch. Uh, it was very different because obviously it was a documentary, um, and there are interesting points in it. Um, with obviously we we always got the. Um, the 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 parent. What's his name? The psychic. I can't like, remember. I know the character, Ray, but it's been a while Ray, since I watched that's it. His name. Yeah. Um, with, with, with Ray and the family, I was thinking. First of all, I was suspicious of the father when I was watching it because of the way they were speaking and the like. I was yeah. like, something's up with this. Something's up with this guy or whatever. But then you sort of get later on to the movie, and it's just in a way, it's a tragic story. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and it, 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 in a way, the brother in it reminded me of well, me in a way because I lost my sister. Uh, funnily enough, about eleven years ago. Uh, actually, no, 13. Oh, God, it was a while ago. Anyway, um, <clears throat> and I, I know how the brother's feeling with... Um, yeah, light spoiler alert. Um, wanting to fake some of ev some of the evidence that he did. Um, t t to uh, essentially make the mother feel better. And I, I understand that. Uh, I understand where he's coming from. So there, there were very real elements in there f for me, personally. Uh, and I, I, there were some bits I, I liked and during the credits I was just left with more questions than answers but it's a, it's good in a way I, I feel like I don't really know what happened but I do there is a definitive A to B finish but then there's also this mystery around it which yeah. you sort of only grows when you're watching the bloody credits you know yeah. what I mean and then you make you want to go back and watch the whole movie again to see if it yeah mm. just it's an enjoyable movie if you like slow movies I would suggest watching it there's no jump scares once again there's a terrifying bit of cell phone footage in it 
That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Mm. Well, you can kind of call that a jump scare, although it doesn't come with a loud noise. It did. It made me. I was like. Hmm. You know what I mean? I was like, like I jumped, the hell but, is yeah, that? because I was startled because I was super uncomfortable. Yeah. I will say again, no spoilers. I, unlike Toby, I felt a bit. I guess it's because I watched it in the dark on a big TV. I felt that by the end, I fully understood it, and I was actually quite saddened uh, by the whole experience. Yeah. Um, but I want to, uh, Gemma. I want to get your thoughts on Lake Mungo before I give mine. Okay. Well, we watched it at the same time. Well, we watched it together. Yeah. And I, um, I'd be really excited to watch it. Probably, I think it was ever since I heard. To be honest, I think it was on Half in the Bag. Um, yeah, they were talking about it, and they were talking about how much better they mentioned how much better Lake Mungo was. Yes, um, it was Jay, wasn't it? Yeah, Jay was talking about that, and I uh, yes, that it intrigued me. And I, what I, I really like the documentary style. I the fact is, you know, it it reminded me if you. If you'd seen a lot of documentaries, the the way that it was shot is very, very, very like realistic documentary mm. shot mm. in yeah. Australia. Definitely. Yeah, so it's like the TV footage. It really felt like Australian. Yeah. Movies. Now what you mean, mate? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, the storyline was very sort of. Um, I bet I'm pretty sure the director even said this himself that it was very much inspired by Laura Palmer. Yeah. And, uh, and the character like, even yeah. has the same last name. Yeah, it's yeah. the same last name and things like that. With, like, um, spoilers for Twin Peaks. Um, it was, like, you know, a woman who was found dead in the water. Yeah. And, like, her last name being Palmer. And, like, he l- 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 led a secret life that nobody knew about. Uh, went to the doctor... Uh, I consulted the doctor before mm. she found out and I knew her death was coming before anyone else did and of course the parallel with the dream as well yeah. that one person she had a dream and then someone experienced the other half of her same dream after her death yeah. again minor spoiler for both um, Twin Peaks and and, um, and Lake Mungo but that happens in this as well yeah so that was something considering how much I, so a very Lynchian vibe I got watching the film um, I I thought I, I was I was never it, one thing about it, it was never bored but it was very slow paced yeah it's a very slow paced film it's n- if you're if you're the kind of person that does bore easily I would probably I would probably leave the film out for maybe a time where you don't feel where where you, where you feel that you could have your full attention because you really do need to pay attention to the because there's so many little bits and there's so many little like there's so many little details that you'll miss and especially like um, with with certain like even just the little facial expressions from the cat like for, for like from the actors who you don't think of as actors you think of them as real people yeah, that are telling you their totally. story because the the writing is I don't, yeah again it's so off the cuff that it seems natural that it seems like they're saying the words for the first time mm-hmm. and that I really liked about it and the ending and towards the end where they actually like you know they end up in the, the you know the titular Lake Mungo yeah there's the, they're, they're, they're there's a watch mojo there. podcast yeah <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> the entire film just turns into some Lovecraftian nightmare yeah so it's we, yeah, we've brought, yeah so we've brought up Lovecraft in the, in the last movie as well and yeah I think I think for some reason found footage seems to take from Lovecraft. It's strange. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's, there's going to be more. Because just yeah, just just the way that it the like the way that the story ended up and I I li- I really did like I I there's I I sympathised with all the characters even I I sympathised with the brother even though I maybe didn't like their his the way like his decisions I understood them um and yeah. I would. Wa- I, I. I really want to watch it again because, I. You can if you want for the next twenty four hours because I bought it on YouTube. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, it's on Shutter. We've got that for free. Yeah, it's four ninety nine. Uh, if you want, if you pay four ninety nine a month, you can get it on Shutter. And you can watch The Void as well on Shutter. Now, mm. and a lot of crap as well. Uh, Tom and I watched a really really bad. Um, Found oh footage movie, God. but I can't remember the name of it. It was like I the watched... haunting of the something. The haunting of the suicide house. Yeah, okay. just dreadful. Not worth um, it. At all. I watched Sasadiko versus Kaiko, and <laughs> that was bad. So, um, I also liked Lake Manga. I mean, like it seems like most people liked it. Toby wasn't super keen on it, but oh. appreciated it. Yeah. Um, I liked it a lot. Uh, I didn't find it tremendously scary, aside from one or two points. 
Um, I, I, there's not, I've not got a lot to add. Uh, there is just a very dark atmosphere, and like I said about Blair Witch, about dread and about um, about despair, definitely that kind of mood that runs through there. It's a very sad film. I think it's certainly the saddest mm-hmm. of the films we're going to discuss. Um, it was quite an influential movie on a couple of filmmakers. Um, it was a bit of a, a bit of a sleeper hit because again, it was really overshadowed by Paranormal Activity. Yeah. But um, I do know there was a film that it was a big uh, influence on, which will briefly mention, but obviously I haven't got time to properly discuss, uh, which was a film called Hell House LLC. Oh, great film. Mm-hmm. Which was um, the the director has flat out said, you know, the, the whole idea of using the documentary format and everything completely came from seeing Lake Mungo and he wanted to make a film like that. That film was, if you, if you like the idea of what they did with Lake Mungo, but it sounds too slow for you, I'll definitely check out Hell House. That's free on Amazon Prime and is much more kind of, I've talked about it on my on my uh, YouTube channel. It's a film that's very fast paced, but and, and quite re- unrelenting in how scary it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I didn't want to t- discuss it on the show because I already did a YouTube video about it. So uh, we, we're going to skip forward in time a little bit to I think 2010, 20, 2013, something like that. I, will just I can't just remember. I, think it's 2012, maybe. I, I can't remember. Check. But the movie we're talking about is VHS anyway. 2012. And um, this one is an anthology film of loosely connected loosely connected things uh, an overarching story holds them together although it's not really a story again it's just kind of like a, yeah, a like placeholder yeah to basically a bunch of criminals break into a guy's house trying to steal a videotape they're unsure of which tape it is so they watch a bunch of them each one contains one a short does. yeah each one each tape contains a short um, horror film on mm-hmm. it's similar to something like um, uh, Tales from the Dark Side the movie Creep Show uh, Creep Show that kind of thing it's an anthology horror uh, which is normally a style I like Tom what did you think of VHS? It's been a while since I've seen it, but I I really liked it, and I think I especially liked it when it came out when I was younger, so I'm a teenager. I think a lot of that is because people have no attention spans, especially (laughs) younger people. So I think this is this would be quite effective for somebody who is a bit younger. I think because there's no real there's no opportunity for you to get bored. It's just constantly like jump to jump to new thing. Like if you don't quite like one of the stories. There's going to be another one and another one till the end, obviously. But so I think that aspect is really, um, really interesting, and I think quite. Uh, I don't know what the right word to describe it is, but it's. I think it's it's almost useful, I guess, for actually marketing the film, because there is no real slow points with it. I think a lot of it. Um, I think it's something me and Jacob spoke about earlier. Uh, is that it's it's somewhat sandwiched by two good segments at the start and at the end, or the middle being a little bit um, not not quite living up to it. I think I'd probably say the first segment is probably the best one, um, which is uh, I think it's called Amateur Night. Am- it? yeah. I don't know why it's called that, but yeah. So that that one's about a couple of um, a group of guys on a night out, and they kind of find a girl at um, this club who's a, a very strange. They take her back to um their their room and you know, obviously want to um shag do a shag with her. <laughs> so they want to uh, yeah, and it's 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 very very realistic in the sense that they all appear very very fucked by that time. <clears throat> yeah, and um this something's obviously very not right with um with the girl. I think that's probably the scariest one for me. I'd say just because of um. I've always found it scary when people are kind of trapped in very small situations. There's this um, this girl is a, is a monster basically, and they're trapped in the bathroom and trying to get out, and it's all very spook. And I must probably, it's it's a bit disappointing because that sets you up like, oh, this is really good. The next one's probably going to be even better. And I'd I'd probably say that why the film isn't as good as it could be for me at least is that the best one is followed immediately by the worst one. I think the worst segment, and that kind of just brought it down a bit and I, I didn't watch the rest of it as, as invested as I could what was it followed by? Second Honeymoon ah yeah, yeah, right. yeah which I, I, I don't think is really it doesn't make too much sense although it might do if I watch it a lot and really understood it but it won't <laughs> it, didn't make, it did not make any sense to me at all <laughs> yeah watching it casually I didn't really get it obviously I won't go into all of them because I don't have time but I think the first one and the last one were definitely probably my favourite ones and I really like the way it's told I think that's because especially for somebody who watches quite a lot of like 10 to 15 minute YouTube videos over and over like it, it's it kind of parallels that probably not deliberately but it parallels that to the point where I'm paying constant attention to it, it was because I, I watch a lot of these films while doing other stuff 
um, at least rewatching them. So I think the way it was presented was really good and really interesting. Um, it had some really good bits and some really kind of average bits. But overall, I, I enjoyed it for, for what it was. It's your catchphrase now, as much as game dudes. VHS is a movie I told Jacob to watch because I watched it back in the day and I fucking loved it. And the second one, ho, 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 blew me away. Blew me away for a particular segment. We'll talk a little bit about it. number two Deserves a bit, to be yeah. its own bloody movie. Anyway. We will, we will briefly so, talk about number two. <clears throat> VHS one, not the greatest out there. But is that, I thought, is that not a music channel? VHS, no, v- VH1. VH1, yeah, that probably was right. VHS1. Now, the best segment on that one is the Halloween one. I think it was just called, I think it was just like 10 31 98. Yeah. Uh, and that was the one, this is one with these group of lads, not taking anything seriously because they're drunk on Halloween night. They go to sneak into this guy's house, go up into the attic, find some people basically doing a real life ex- exorcism on this woman. They try, they're like, hey, joining in. They get beaten the shit out of. They then decide we've got to get this woman out. They try and take this woman out, and stuff gets fucked. Stuff, supernatural things get fucked. Hands come out, walls, everything. And I wasn't expecting that. When I first watched the movie, I was just like, okay, what, what, what am I watching here? I'm just going to watch a guy going for videotape. You sort of see him at the beginning of the film, like beating up people in the car park, these pieces of shit that want these, this videotape or whatever. <clears throat> yeah, I was and like, they, oh, yeah. These people, I want them to live. Yep, totally. <laughs> and then, um, basically, they, they, they get back to this house, and, uh, and there's loads of videos, and they start watching them. And then the first one is The Siren, as mm. they called it. And then yeah, yeah. Second only movie, whatever. But that was the one I enjoyed the most, because, well, I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's the most scariest in a way, you know. Um, and then there's other ones, which are just a bit, eh, really, in that field. VHS one isn't, the best, really, I'd say, if you want to watch any of them, watch VHS 2. Yeah, don't watch the true. third one. There's a third one, and that doesn't exist to me. Yeah, we don't speak of the third one. Yeah, I've, I've heard it so bad. So. I haven't but seen it. What makes this film unique is that all of these little different segments are directed by different people. Hmm. So that's why it feels completely different from, well, I guess the actual story. It's interesting to me because I'm like, well, what is the relevance of these these videotapes? I guess I'll never find out because I'm not going to watch the third one, but still. Uh, one of the more enjoyable horrors for me, but, but mainly because we're not going to be focusing on one story. You're focusing on about five or six different ones and they make you go, the fuck was that? That was great. You know, some of them. Some of them you go, the fuck was that? Quite simple, you know. Um, but I'm not going to talk about VHS 1, 2, until Jacob mentions a certain thing then I'm going to jump in on that. So... Moving over to Gemma. Right. Yes, Gemma, what did you think of VHS? I thought VHS was mediocre. I thought that the first segment, Amateur Night, had some good elements of it to it, but overall was hampered by idiotic um, protagonists. Yep, I agree, right? I agree actually. <laughs> um, I, but I thought that that was probably the most competent um, of the stories, um, the ten thirty one ninety eight was also very good. Beth probably better. I liked I liked the um, the imagery mostly mm. in the, the house. Really the good. effects yeah, were really really, really, really well, good. Well put um, and but it ended quite abruptly. Um, well, yeah. Go back and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday the seventeenth. Oh, that was, was the, the worst. worst one. That, that was the worst. Is that, that one with the scramble monster yes, in the yes, woods? That yes. was dreadful. Yeah. That, <laughs> that one made me so sad. <laughs> <laughs> I was sort of just like, the acting in that one was also the worst. I'm convinced they actually used porn actors in that. Because <laughs> yeah. it was just yeah. one of the girls were like, it was like, you're all gonna die here. It's because they're trying to be 80s, but it doesn't work. For yeah. me, that doesn't work. So I agree. I agree. Second honeymoon just didn't make any sense. Mm. And it was like... What about the other one? The, the oh, other the, 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 the things that happened to Emily when the, when she was younger. Oh, yeah. The escape I one, I think. Thought yeah, that one, I thought that one was okay. There was some really... Again, that was some really interesting elements that didn't pan out. Mm. Like, they probably... I think the direction would be wanted to go. I liked the the Skype call. I liked... I forgot that one existed. So yeah. did I until just now. Um, but, yeah. I liked the sort of... Um, I, I, I liked... 
I thought that the the, the guy in, like who was manipulating the girl into thinking mm. that she was you know that to thinking you know that there was ghosts in her house when like uh, when uh, and that, that it was all in her head and then she was continuing to do it to other people I thought that was interesting mm. but I wanted but it, 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 it was too short it was yeah it was too short in order to like and and I think there was just too much focus on like oh look at me uh, like just the, the the girl just like going oh hi hi, hi I've got my tits out like, yeah pretty much it was just all like that it just it and uh, and I t- and the overarching story was just nonsense and I thought that I didn't want any of the main char- of the characters at the start I was like oh yeah this is great I would really want to, I really am rooting for these characters to get what they want. To be fair, look at the beginning of Parry Brown. Oh, 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 I love that movie so oh, That's a great movie. Yeah, but that's the bad guy. So. Yeah. Oh, that is true, that is true, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, done? overall, I would probably give VHS a measly four, five out of ten, because I would probably give Amateur Night a two and a half, and I would give, um, no, wait, no, I would give Amateur Night about a two. I'd give, um... Ha- the the last one a two and a half and Emily one a half. Are these out of five? Or yeah. Five? Out of five. A half, a ten. Fuck it. <laughs> oh no, it's, I'm Irish now. <laughs> okay, so some mixed and mixed opinions in this room about VHS. So I guess it's time for me to give mine. I fucking hated it. Um, <laughs> I thought it was dreadful. Um, I didn't like the second one either. Um, but we'll start with VHS. Right, so first of all, as Gemma pointed out, there's, everyone's a cunt. Yes. There's no one that you like in this movie, except the lads in the final segment. They're okay. Mm-hmm. But like the, the, the sort of, so there's like the, the criminal guys who are getting the VHS tape. There's like a whole story, uh, like it's supposed to be a through line, but nothing of any consequence happens, oh. and it's really confusing and stupid. Amateur Night is an okay segment with some really creepy moments. However, the characters are not likeable, so I don't care that they're in jeopardy. Well, they're they're also stupid. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, <laughs> there's like when there's there's a scene where like the guy who's wearing the, the, the glass the POV glasses camera has a perfect straight shot to run to the exit and he get hides in the bathroom. Yeah. And there's they're there's a little, little bit pissed. Yeah, and then no, they're they're off their tits, I but like it's mean. it's and also, every segment has like nudity and tons of yeah. gore instead of be actually trying to build atmosphere, with the exception of the final one. I feel, and the same is true of the second film, in fact, even more so in the second one, that these films are made by people who aren't big horror fans and have a very shallow understanding of the genre. Because, yes, I understand that they have to tell their story quickly, but what they're doing is they're just throwing a bunch of blood and tits and floppy willies at the screen. And it just Where kind of. the Game of Thrones. <laughs> I just feel I, I I was very underwhelmed by the film. Um, yeah, I can say. About the second one, Raj, so you might yeah, I will in a second. Yeah. Uh, and then I liked the final segment. Um, there was a moment I really liked when they were setting up that this was a these guys had gone to the wrong because Toby said oh they go to this guy's house. I should point out they're going there for a party. They they've gone to a haunted house party, but they've right. gone to the wrong house. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but spooky stuffs happening. Like doors are starting. This one guy comes out running out, laughing and screaming like he's really scared because they got hands coming out the walls. Yeah. <laughs> and you know that they're in the wrong house, and that was very creepy because I was like oh because I pictured it without seeing it. And yeah. I that was very creepy. VHS two, I was really grumpy when I started watching it because yeah. um, the it, again it's just like unlikable people filming stupid bullshit um, immediately like nudity in the first five minutes again that was just like oh I'm filming these people having sex through the window I'm like, why am I looking at this and then the first oh, yeah. segment was like the, the robotic eye one and all that Physical that trial. that was yeah. that was yeah. rubbish oh. and then the next one was even worse that was the GoPro zombie man yeah which was oh, like what how is the, I don't buy that in the reality of this film this is a real tape because that's like a zombie outbreak that happened why is why is no why is that not been on the news yeah. but then something special happened oh, man. the indonesian cult movie thing Saint happens oh, yeah, and yeah, suddenly God. it's like an eight out of ten and it's like where did this movie come from yeah. where the fuck was the guy from the raid 2 investigating this creepy sex cult that are actually summoning real apocalyptic demon monsters where the fuck was this movie for the last hour Oh man, that that bit is fucking genuinely terrifying. When I the loved... film film was that fucked, like they're they're teaching kids there yeah, as well. Honestly, like, it was like what the fuck is going on. It was like the writers of Silent Hill of the Silent Hill oh, game series. Man 
like injected themselves with a half ton of weapons grade plutonium and then we're just given a camera yeah. it's one of the most unsettling fucking things I've ever seen and then the alien ones okay are a bit naff like the, the aliens they, like the they, they look like um, they, they, you know, they look like guys in their underpants wearing gas masks but from, from, from far away they look frightening yeah they from, do, from, oh, from a distance very realistic from a distance realistic so from a distance. what they should have done in VHS 2 is what they did in the first one which is sandwich the bad movies with the good ones I people would love VHS 2 I think if instead of opening with the stupid eyeball one and the zombie they went they opened with the alien one definitely yeah. then jumped to the eyeball one then the zombie one and then finish with the fucking apocalypse yeah, cult one. In that one isn't it? Yeah. yeah yeah and then there's like yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, um. So I, everybody, before we move on, VHS two, I think generally is better. Even though segments are much worse than the worst of the first one, mm. there is nothing in the first one that can touch the yeah, sa- safe haven. Oh yeah, like, safe haven is the best. I would say watch VHS two just for safe haven. Yes, mm. absolutely. It, in a way, it's it's like they're repurposing of the Jonestown massacre. In a yes. way, yeah, That's I, what I was love thinking. the bit where it's just like, "I will be with you in a minute, sir." Yeah, and just shoots himself in the head. Yeah, it's like, yeah, how fucked is this? Oh my, I absolutely it's great. I'll have to go back and watch it's that. It's brilliant. Song, it's, uh, it's, I actually I wish that had been a, that had been a ninety-minute film where yeah. I could have just gotten to know the characters a bit more and the subtlety and the slow building up to that. And that's my only thing with it. Um, okay, so we're gonna jump forward a couple of years again to our most recent film. Um, 16, isn't it? 2013. 14, I thought. Okay, 13. Okay. Um, so, this is one that I... We have to be very light on the spoilers because the entire crux of this movie rests on you not knowing the ending. Yeah. Else it's not going to work. Um, this movie is The Borderlands. Now, to give you some context, this movie has not been seen by that many people, but anyone who's seen it, once you mention you've seen it, they won't shut up about it. Yeah, uh, I was trying to get out of like fin- I finished work. And I was like trying to get out, and my colleague said, "Oh, uh, what are you up to?" I was like, "I'm doing a podcast. What films are you discussing?" I list them all, and then I got to this one, The Borderlands. He went, "You've seen The Borderlands," and he spent 20 minutes talking about the ending. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, so this is one of those movies. Um, basically, it's similar to if the film called The, the Last Exorcism, which is about um, oh. uh, uh, sort of a scam artist guy who's like oh you know I do, f- I do fake exorcisms and film it we never thought we'd be using that um, point of reference well no because this does it much better these instead of being charlatans themselves are these Vatican investigators who go around debunking things miracles. or yeah mm. they get invited to check out miracles and they have to see if they're real now there's a miss of course go ahead yeah, now there has been a, mis- a mysterious please. event in the past we don't know much about but because of that they now have to film everything during the investigation so they hire a guy who's out from outside the church who's a big tech guy to come and help with the investigation um, and he's he's agnostic but he's more willing to believe in the supernatural yeah. than they are which is kind of cool because he's not tied down to the strict sort of Christian religion idea um, it's a miracle at a church in this weird little town this tiny little town um uh, the, it, I think the town is like somewhere in Norfolk. Hmm. And basically this little church, with, it's a t- town with very few people in it. It's basically a village, isn't it? Uh, and the church is a very small congregation, not many people go. And during a, a, during a, a baptism, um, the, church, the bells start to ring on their own, the church starts to shake, and the, um, the, the priest. priest starts to bleed from the nose. And uh, it's all caught on video, so they go to investigate. And it seems at first that maybe there's nothing to it at all. Perhaps it is fake. Um, but then the longer they investigate, the darker and weirder things get. And uh, then it leads to, uh, without any spoilers, a third act, which is so terrifying. Um, generally, it's all people talk about when you talk about this movie with them. Tom, what did you think of The Borderlands? It was probably the first film in a very long time I've been properly spooked by. Is um, usually, and I think it's down to my fondling of the way I watch films. Is usually I'm I'm doing something else, I'm working on something, and I'm watching the film in the background. But um, the first time I watched it, I was working on um, something very very quick that I needed to finish. But I was watching it, and like I stopped working on what I was doing about very early on in. I think I think just when they got to the church the first time, because I was so invested in it. Um, and I, I rarely, I rarely feel like that. But um, one thing I really like, um, just in general, is it's, it's again, it's a me thing. 
I feel like I can empathise a lot more in horror, at least when the actors. So it's a it's a British film. I think I can. That's definitely like a big thing for me, anyway. But I love the setting and I love the way it built up, and all the characters I think played played the points really really well, and I think my favourite thing really, um, I think probably my end, the ending is probably one of my favourite things. But I love the town, I love the setting because of how unsettling it is. The, yeah. the few brief interactions with the townspeople, it just it feels so wrong without being yeah. like way too like um, that, like forcing it down your throat it's like there are people who are just really strange and like it's just it's just wrong that's yeah. the best way to describe it hi I'm strange <laughs> no, but it's You're... very negative though isn't it it's yeah. not strange it's not funny strange it's no. not quirky the people it's, are just very negative it's, it's, it's sort of like it's like a mixture of the the patrons of the slaughtered lamb in in an American woman from London mm-hmm. and the patrons of Summer Isle and the Wicker mm. Man yeah. yeah, there's even a Wicked Man reference really early on yeah. in the film, yeah. It's, it's like, none of the main characters are very welcome by anyone, really, apart apart from um, uh, the uh, the priest, I think, is the only one who's really um, even somewhat welcoming to, and everyone else is just, it's like they know something's wrong, but they're not, they're not, like, talking about it. Yeah. But it's not, it's not quite like that, but it's, it's like they, there's a weird air about the whole place. And I like that, um, there's bits of respite where you're just talking in the pub. Because I, I like that in films. I like kind of trying to work out what's going on. It's like they're kind of doing that throughout and you feel quite invested in it. And um, you know, like doing tricks and stuff. And it's all, like, I really like that. But like looming is the church where you know something's very, very wrong. And they keep going back and they go back at, like, in the, at night. And it's like, don't do not do that. <laughs> this is why you're doing this. Wait until the next day when it's sunny outside. No, it's... um very very spooky and it it builds up in quite a believable way and like there are I I don't know the word for it but it's a particular type of horror that just doesn't leave when you're thinking about it I I, it might I don't know what the word is but the actual bits that are spooky about it like the actual proper scares it's like incomprehensible but it's like it's something that you're almost morbidly curious yeah. about. Yeah, I, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Yeah, mm. and it's I've never seen that done so well in this film, and I just want everybody to watch it. Yeah, yeah. Toby, what did you think of the Bordeaux? You saw it for the first time about a week ago, didn't you? About maybe two weeks ago. He's <laughs> just opening up another beer. It's like wow. Well, I had to let wait me, till Tom stopped. you at arm. I enjoyed the Bordeaux. Um, just to, to just to put it lightly, to put it massively, fuck me, what a film that was! Like, um, wasn't expecting much. Uh, started watching it, started off a bit sleepy. Uh, I like the way that they explain why you they're wearing mm. everything, all the cameras behind their ears. You know, you can see everything. Yeah. Why they set up the cameras and they're even setting up the cameras, you know what I mean? It's clever, actually. Sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to make this point before I forget. It's clever because not only do they establish it in a way that's expository and makes you believe in it, but it adds a layer of spook because it, there's a mysterious event where everything went tits up in the past. Mm. So you know the supernatural stuff exists in this world and it's like, you know. Yup. Excuse me. Um, I, I I enjoy the characters, especially the tech guy. He's my favourite. Mm. I really love the tech guy. And I love the other guy as well, the drunk. Let's call him the drunk. Not a drunk yeah, Deacon drunk is his name. Deacon, that's it. The Scott- Deacon! The Scott- oh, Deacon says it. I love it. Deacon. Um, the church itself, it's very ominous, very weird. The village and the people, the chavs, everyone, they're all a bit fucked, really, in a way. And they don't really get explained to why it's a bit not screwed on. Sleepy village, which is a bit twisted, but, you know. That, that, that setting happens a lot. I want to know what this old guy says when they first enter the village. Yeah, I, I like Because like, he sort of mumbles, and I was like, I was like, what the fuck did he just say? Yeah. And then they drive off. Like, anyway. Uh, I love the jokes that um, Mark, that's his name, isn't it? Mark, the tech guy, whatever his name is. Uh, no, Gray. I think right, Mark Gray, is, yeah. is the boss. Right, yeah. yeah. Mark's the boss. Mark, he's always doing jokes, and I love the contrast between them two. Um, and then when it gets to the horrible bits, it, well, mainly in the church when they set up the cameras in the church, that's when it gets a bit more of a degree of like, okay, <laughs> um, why are you setting this up? And then they obviously cut to the cameras at night in the church when it's horrible and it's uncomfortable. And uh, one of them eventually go to the church at night and I'm like, 
oh, this is not a good scene. You know, yeah. and then and then you obviously it builds from there, builds from there, and then you're obviously building up to the final, well, let's say about 10, 15 minutes or so. And it's probably got one of the better endings I've seen for a horror in a while. And that's because it's very clever. Um, I won't say anything else than that, but it is extremely clever what they do. And I was like, oh God, imagine that. Yeah. Essentially, that's what I was saying to myself. Imagine that. Mm. Yeah, um, but I really enjoyed Borderlands. Wasn't expecting much when I was, you know, first watching it. But I always love it. I always love good priest drama. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, the oh, fourth... sorry. Much so... better than uh, what's that film? Devil Inside. Oh, Devil Inside. Bad. Shit bad. With the ending that said. Can't cross that though. You think the film's going somewhere? Mm, no. Yeah. All yeah, right. This okay. is how you do an ending. Yeah. The, the Borderlands. Oh my god. I have. I was so terrified. I think I gasped, like <laughs> like a girl yeah. properly. Like it was like I properly just I I just I, I yeah. made like a, a noise. Yeah, you and I watched it together and we were both on the couch, basically like curled up next to each other. It was as though we were trying to hide from the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Um. What I absolutely I loved the character. Great. Like Gray and Deacon and love Mark the Irishman, the Englishman and the Scotsman. Yeah, it's like a joke, isn't it? <laughs> Englishman and Irishman oh, and Scotsman yeah, walk into true. a yeah. church. Yeah. Um. I like that. I think that was definitely um done. Yeah, it was probably on purpose. <laughs> it was on purpose. Um. I thought that the story was really good as well. I liked. I, I liked. I was intrigued pretty much from the first five minutes of the yeah. film. Um. Because. I do. This is a, it's the kind of thing that interests me, and there were just bits in it that really terrified me, and it just kept on happening. Just little bits, like um, noises. Um, it, one noise in particular that happens where, like in like while 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 they're sleeping and they hear the screaming from outside. Yeah. Um, that completely invades their personal space because it's the cottage they're staying in. Yeah. Mm. Oh, was that when they're eating? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was it. Yeah. Um, and uh, yes, because I thought it was just because it's in the dark. And yes, the one of the bits that really frightened me, and it was a completely blink and you'll miss it moment, is when they're standing outside the church and one of the gravestones oh, changes yeah. to one of their names. I thought that happened. Yeah. I was like, hang on a second. Yeah, I, 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 I knew I, that does happen then. I wasn't going insane. Oh, no. And that just, I could, I, I, like, pretty much my whole body tensed up. Yeah. And, like, again, I'm getting the goosebumps. I love the way he didn't even, I love the way he doesn't even notice, because he's uh, out for a fag, isn't he? Yeah. I'm fucking, I'm going to go back and watch that movie yeah. now, because I fucking knew that happened. Uh huh. I, I had to think about it. I was like, look, that changed. That yeah. changed. I was like, oh, for God, that fuck's sake, that changed. I th- sorry, that sounded like, um, that sounded like fucking Ed then. Fucking big out was right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and the 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 end, the pretty much the last act of the film was, it was just again. I'm going to mention Lovecraft because it's very it's, yeah, it's yeah. it was so quick. It was definite cosmic horror mm. because it was just felt like it wasn't like like sort of. I'm not going to spoil the ending, obviously, but it just felt like something you'd read. Yeah, in, like by H.P. Lovecraft. I found myself throughout the um. Uh, uh, and the next day after I'd already seen the film and I couldn't wash it out of my brain mm. I was imagining it as a short story which is strange I've never done that before I kept picturing how it would f- it would read written yeah. as a short story I don't think I've ever done that with a film before yeah and yeah. I, I just it, it felt so vast mm. the the sort of like in a, in a very open ended way that even though the film ended it was like there's something there that I yeah. there's something underneath us <laughs> something terrible in this that exists in the world, yeah. Uh-huh. Something so ancient and yeah. primal and awful. Yeah, that's basically. Really? That's... It put me actually it put me to the mind of the first time I saw the stone tape. Yes. Although I thought this was yeah. much scarier than the stone tape. Um, it gave me that same feeling of, of something very old and very evil. Yes, that's the kind of feeling I had. I had that it was just I I'd, I'd felt there's a couple of films out there that made that that made me so uncomfortable. It's made me want to take a shower afterwards. And those films are that have been genuinely two by the same director actually. Um and yeah and 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 the no one so that so this is going to be the fourth film that I feel that way. It was like the first film was the Machinist, which I can never watch again, 
second film. Never seen it. Uh, the second film being Enemy. But I do want to watch that film again. But it made oh, okay. me feel I've the seen same Enemy same. three times now. I really like it. Right, but it made I've me feel the it. same way as it did. And then it was then it was uh, the Borderlands. Then it was Session Nine, yeah. who was also by the, which is also the same director as the Machinist. Yeah. Session Nine. What's that film? It's the one with the asbestos, with the asbestos thing, and it like it's. Um, I watched it because it was about asbestos. Because I was listening to Tom on the stream the other night. I love like mold and old. <laughs> I buildings. love asbestos. <laughs> like I love, I love like mold and mildew and and old buildings. So that's yeah. why I watched it. And also, it's, we just it's, watch a whole it's film. Inspired Silent Hill two Fair and three. Enough. So like, uh, uh, and lots of that sort of stuff. Yeah. So um, there's a there's a, so the, and the Borderlands. I genuinely like felt so uncomfortable on my own skin at the end. Yeah. I thought, um, I thought that the film had had genuinely left its mark on me. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah. This is the kind of movie. This watching this movie feels like going to war. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like this is a movie that changes a person. Yeah. Like, I'm going to tell you instead of talking about me for a moment, I'm going to tell you about other people who have seen this movie. Now, my friend Chris is a big, big horror guy. He's uh, one of his favorite movies is the Blair Witch Project, and he was going to come on the podcast, but we couldn't facilitate that and make it happen, unfortunately, um, just because he's not from around here and he was only visiting just before we were going on holiday. It was awkward, but we watched it together quite late at night, mm-hmm. and um, I needed to get up in the morning. And we were still in my kitchen talking, and I was sort of politely saying like, "Oh, Chris, I need to go to bed, mate." And he said, "Look straight there, I know. I'm just mustering up the courage to walk home in the dark." <laughs> Like, he was that bothered by it. Uh, Mark Kermode, again, British film critic, absolutely huge horror fan. His favourite film is The Exorcist. He never shuts up about it. I've seen the... Ins- yeah, I've yeah. seen this. He said this he was little... so frightened that in the final act, with the, the big thing everyone talks about, in the final act, he almost left the theatre. He sat yeah, there, yeah. squeezing the, the seat, and I think I have to leave. And I said to Gemma, um, as, again, they were exploring uh, in those scenes at the end, um, and, and they're getting... It's getting worse and worse and worse... I looked at Gemma, and because I, I suffer with a lot of aches and pains because my day job is very uh, manual, lots of lifting and things, and uh, all the muscular pains and things I suffer from all started aching at once because my body was so tense. And I looked at Gemma and went, Gemma, and I was sort of shaking, I went, I'm so scared. No, was like, this film is so scary, I'm in physical pain. <laughs> and I'd never felt that before because the first half of the film is okay like the acting's great I love the actors the character development's nice they have such good relationships like with the Blair Witch Project you really want these guys to, to live you want them to get through it you you know you want it to be okay except for Mark oh um, yeah, for, fuck, yeah fuck yeah. him but like the two main characters you really like them you yeah really, want really, them. really yeah. like mm-hmm. they've got a great bond because they're kind of at odds with each other at first and you know it comes kind of a buddy movie and you're like yeah. I really like their bond and their friendship and they're like, I'd like to see more movies of them like solving mysteries yeah, and stuff. So I you're so like, TV show. yeah, so like you're, you yeah, you're, 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 but you're watching it and you're like, you're just so, you're just so frightened for him. I mean, it's, it's a film that, again, it just reveals little pieces of itself to you over time. Mm. The like with the Blair Witch Project, I think it's good to sandwich the Blair Witch and this for the for the video because they're the two most similar. I think, yeah, it's the film that lays little pieces out for you to um, find and piece together mm. and then like with the Blair Witch Project it's ambiguous however this one is not meant to be impenetrable it's a mystery you are meant to solve as you watch it and there are there is this genuinely negative atmosphere the whole way through where you're sort of unsettled there's a couple of cheap jump scares that some of them are, one of them is even a comedy one that they throw in deliberately yeah, because yeah. it's almost like they're fucking with you it feels mm. like the movie is, is, is kind of deliberately going boo like and, and being like oh you know, oh, a big, a big hairy spider. You know, <laughs> so, so you kind of roll your eyes. That was the only and bit it, that I actually was like, what? And I was like, ah, oh, fuck you, favorite character. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, the movie goes. Well, actually, hold on a second. Yeah, it does. It's like the fake miracle thing at the beginning. That's a bit that they're trying to do, and it's like, kind of paralleling that. You got the fake scares, like with the, yeah, the, you know, the, the miracle they're gonna solve, and it's all a bit. I, I like that. That's what I, that's what I thought when I watched it anyway. Um, I respected it. But. One thing uh, as well um, is the sound design is very good. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of spooky sound design. It does use a few. It does use a lot of video glitching and stuff. It doesn't abuse it to the point where it. But it, it does happen occasionally. It can be annoying. Yeah. Um, it's, it's contextually justified, so mm. I didn't mind it too much. But it's one of those tropes that just to get some of my nerves in found footage. Um, there was only one thing because they use like um, sort of like old analog equipment to capture sounds and things like that to try to figure out what's going on. Um, and there's a, they isolate this baby crying sound, which is very yeah. creepy. The oh, problem yeah. is, it's a stock sound effect 
that I recognised <laughs> because they use it a lot in Shadow Man, which yep. is a game that I love so much. I named my YouTube channel after it. Oh, so, Man. yes, I recognise it from the. It's uh, in the lava, the ducks. lava ducks, and I was like, "That's the baby crying." Because um, yeah, it's it's on the sound same screaming sound pack that we we use to scream from that in not the baby one but an adult one in Abyssus at one point. So it was um, I recognised the so it kind of took me out the moment and made, reminded me I was watching a film and not so. Yeah. But none of that fucking mattered for the next two or three days. <laughs> When all I could think about was the last ten fucking minutes of this movie. Yeah. Oh, and also, just for you guys at home, in case you didn't know, it's available on Amazon Prime Home Video. You can watch it right now if you wanted to. Yeah, it's free on... Just make sure it's called The Borderlands, not just Borderlands. Yes, because there's another film called Borderlands, and of course a video game as well. Um... Which is nothing to do. There's an American film, isn't there, about the Mexican border called Borderlands, which Probably. has nothing to do with this movie. I'm just checking if it's named something else in America. It is. America. It's This film is called Final Prayer in That's America, it. Oh, okay. which is a rubbish name. Uh, but I understand why, if you lived outside the UK, maybe the name of the Borderlands wouldn't mean much to you um, in the context of the story. Mm. But I think this one gets my seal of approval. Yep. yep. So before we start doing it, before we do our challenge um, for the episode, I think uh, we should each say what our favourite and least favourite was. Um, as see, even though I've been dick riding the Borderlands, and I want everyone out there to watch it because I think it is a very accessible film and it's very frightening. My favourite is still the Blair Witch Project. Mm -hmm. It's just got a very special place in my heart. Very closely followed by the Borderlands, and my least favourite was VHS. Yeah, I'd probably say least favourite was. Probably VHS. It's the one that I'd probably not watch again out of all of them. Same, yeah. And um, I think my favourite probably is The Borderlands, just because I've never had such like a, a drive to want to show everybody I know the film. And it's just it's just so spook. It's yeah. the biggest spook I've had for a very, very, very long special. time. And it's, I want to show everyone, <laughs> basically. Before I talk about mine, I want to bring up some comparisons. Uh, something I was supposed to mention earlier. You were saying earlier how the Blair Witch Project, the way they advertised, was very real. Very, they try to make you convinced that this is, this is a real thing, right? It in draws in well, it must have drawn from that in many ways. The way that uh, another found footage film by very very different Cloverfield was again very advertised. Viral, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was very viral, very, you know, trying to make out seem like very real. One of my favourite films, but anyway... I, I liked Cloverfield a lot, actually. Yeah. That was good. I genuinely do enjoy Cloverfield. Ten Cloverfield Lane was very good, not a found footage film, so I couldn't talk about it here. <laughs> Ten Cloverfield Paradox. <laughs> oh, no. Kill me now. <laughs> Kill me now. Anyway, uh, my favourite out of all of them is probably The Borderlands. Uh, it was a very good film. I do enjoy that, and I still think about it now. Uh, least favorite, favorite, only because not really much happened in comparison to the other ones was like Mongo. But not saying it's a bad film. Not saying you know whatever. I'm just saying it's my least favorite out of all of them. I am saying VHS was a bad film. <laughs> least favorite VHS. <laughs> That was a bad film. Poor VHS. Man. Poor VHS. <laughs> it's all right, mate. You were lived up by the sequel. It's fine. Just don't worry about it, VHS. All right. And my favorite is very hard for me to decide because I love the Blair Witch Project, <clears throat> the Borderlands, and like Mungo for all very different, but all very like all very great reasons that they all that there is something that I love about each and every one of them and I cannot choose which one I like the most. The Border Lake Project. The Border Lake Project. <laughs> um. I'd have to watch them all again in order to make my decision final. Mm -hmm. So all right. I'm going to so you're cheap gonna, out. And you're going to cheap out. The Border Lake Project. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, fair enough. All right. So um, our challenge this week is going right back to the Blair Witch Project, which is it, of course, received two atrociously bad sequels and it was a massive pop culture sensation. So the Sorry, idea. What were the, what were the sequels about? I've never seen them. So the first one isn't about anything. The second sequel, as uh, the first sequel, right, isn't about one. anything at all and makes no sense and is totally stupid. Right. Oh, that it's basically the indescribable. It's just it's just weird. Right. It's just nonsense. The third movie is sort of a soft reboot of the first one, except the found footage doesn't work. There's a jump scare every five seconds, no. and there are shots like where someone's filming because the witch monster is behind them. So 
they they want to see it in the in the camera so they know if it's there. So they look they're walking backwards for some reason. Um, I think it's established earlier why, but um, who cares? And they're using the little camera screen to check. But then there's a reverse shot of the camera. How's that being filmed? That's, yeah, they they put so much effort into like making that. it feel yeah, like real right. footage in the first film, and they just fucking shit the bed in the third one. Um, but anyway, the point is, it was such a pop culture sensation, and it was a lot of people started thinking it was a real urban legend, like something like the Jersey Devil. So our our thing this week is to pitch a movie, TV show, comic book, whatever, in that universe. Now my idea is very simple: take the two fishermen. <laughs> I knew you were going to bring it back. We take the fishermen. From the film. Make them fuck. Why is this David Lynch? <laughs> <laughs> Just say no. Make them fuck. Okay, you okay. crack an egg on it. For 90 minutes. You now, get him, Billy you get Bob, him fish for trout. Billy Bob, I'm going to set your head on fire. We'll talk about it. All right? <laughs> all right, so um, that's a horrible David Lynch impression. I apologize. Um, so you take these two these two chaps, the fishermen, the 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 they sort of I'm cheating a bit because they're sort of believer and, and skeptical characters. It's it's ba- it's it's my idea I had about them solving mysteries the the Borderlands show, but instead you take the really funny fishermen, mm-hmm. um, the sort of odd couple from uh, the Blair Witch Project. You don't do it in found footage; you do it as a, yeah. a straight up thing, and uh, they end up lost uh, in the woods and happen upon an actual sort of mystery and they wind up being quite successful in solving it and they okay. they sort of it's sort of like supernatural but just with these goofballs <laughs> solving mysteries around Burkittsville that are all connected to it you could do it in found footage though you could do it as a sort of like a like a ghost hunters tv show yeah you yeah. know just like them filming each other ghost adventures yeah it's the <laughs> gayest show on tv <laughs> yeah. um, it really is quite bad it guy. just the, Zach you know. Beggins I've got so many muscles I can punch a ghost anyway but that's basically my, my my thought process on that is I think you could the best way to do it would be to not play it too seriously and do something very different mm-hmm. to what they already have done in the series because trying to retread the first one hasn't worked but trying to, to sort of make something kind of edgy and ironic didn't work with the the, the second movie so that's that's my pitch mm. short pitch but you know Tom yeah, mine's a bit disconnected I haven't thought about it um, as much as I probably would have liked but I, th- I thought since what at least from what I can see that what made the first one so good, um, was how I think probably not. I should have probably mentioned this at the time um, when we were talking about the Blair Witch. But uh, when that came out, you couldn't just kind of type into YouTube like Blair Witch ending explained. You know, have some like uh, <laughs> some cretin talk to you about how they think the film ended. Oh, um, I hate them. They hate the worst but you, the only thing you'd really find would be like a forum post from a, or like a website from a fan trying to give their theories, and that probably added to it a lot. So I really like the ambiguity, and I'd, I'd like to kind of do something a bit like that. So my kind of idea, I don't have any idea how I'd, how it would be kind of be played in a way that would work because I like the idea but not sure the execution but basically I'd like it to um, follow a group of three um, three friends not mu- well quite like the original um, three who uh, are in the Blair Witch Project and they go out to a wood and they do so but they're, they're there to like try and make another film they're trying to fake um, like another Blair Witch and it's all like in the same place the, the, the film exists but they're trying to do a new mystery, and it's all—it's a little bit corny, but not to the point where it's parody. It, it's like um, it's like a lackluster attempt. Um, but there's a—they try and up the climax and make it a bit more scary, and they want to introduce like a monster. Um, I'm not sure exactly how they do it, but I want one of them at the end to accidentally be murdered by one of them when they're trying to do yeah. the final bit, the scary bit. Um, to the climax of the film, they accidentally kill one of them, and I don't know how exactly it would work, but they decide to play it off like it's part of the film. Yeah. So one of them dies, but they, but it's played like it's part and it's meant to happen, and they're sort of very concerned, but they've just killed someone, <laughs> and the best way to um, cover it up is to make it look like it's all. Um, part of the film and like I, th- I think I remember the actors from the first one went into like hiding for like a year just so no one yeah. could really I th- was, is, that, is that right? Think... From what I've heard yeah I mean yeah. I, I don't know how I, I can't verify that right this second but that's what I heard the same yeah. is true with Cannibal Holocaust yeah so along that same vein so everyone would kind of disappear and it will be all like um, the people will be ambiguous but they leave it somewhere 
I, I, don't know, I always kind of liked that concept. I thought it would be very just ambiguous and a bit weird and still kind of adding adding spooks along the way. But um, I, don't, I, th I think it would kind of be a bit refreshing because it's just a, I don't know, a bit odd. I like yeah, that. Yeah, sort of quirky and strange. Yeah. Hmm. That's what I, I would go on something along those lines. Before, before Toby does his, um, you reminded me of something when you said about them going into hiding. I heard an anecdote about how Heather, uh, Heather Donahue was... Um, driving home once and uh, her car, her shitty car because they weren't paid very well the actors it was a super low budget film her shitty car with a really you know lots of miles on it broke down right by an enormous um, billboard by the road for the Blair Witch Project ah. <laughs> she was just horrified that her life was still shit and she was still a broke actress and this movie she'd been in was making a fucking fortune <laughs> yeah like uh, sorry this bit of time it wasn't the editor on that paid like ten dollars or something it's to do it all together. Probably something pathetic, yeah. yeah. Just like... It cost sixty thousand to put you know, to, to to make sixty thousand and it made over two hundred and eighty eight million. Oh, God. <laughs> Hear about that a lot in the industry. Now Toby, what's what's your movie pitch? Okay, or TV so show it's or whatever? gonna it, it's gonna start out it's gonna be a found footage movie. Basically these guys are obsessed. It's gonna be set maybe a couple of years after the uh, events of Blair Witch Project. And they're very aware of the tape and they're obsessed and they, they basically have a Blair Witch fan club and they love the film. And then they've got the news on and they're like, you got to watch this, you got to watch this. And it, basically Josh from the Blair Witch tapes has been found alive. Oh. And um, they're like, we have to meet this guy basically. And he, in the footage, he looks a bit freaked out. And inevitably it gets to it where a couple of them get to meet him and in a, a very good Jurassic Park 2 slash 3 style they're like okay well um, we'll offer you a lot of money if you go back to the place with us yeah. and he's like I will but I am not going to the forest I will, I will sit in the car you know and, all. Yeah. But, and essentially it's going to escalate from there and Josh is going to go missing and um, these guys it's going to be basically a rehash of Blair Witch Project 1 but with Josh coming back and sort of trying to remember but not knowing anything and just wanting to try and sort of find his friends in a way and finding out more about this movie and how suddenly it's an international success and it'd be interesting what, yeah. in a way really that uh, sort of the thing that interests me actually is the idea okay. of, of josh now like however many years later try like not in the woods but the the, the, the earlier sections of him sort of readjusting to life and then trying to understand how his like suffering and, and the hell he went through is like a major motion picture now yeah. that people like, like that, that, that yeah. would very much play the line that would make people even think it's more believable yeah. <laughs> mm. Gemma well one of the things that is very interesting to me is or is I, I love urban legends I love things well. that are I, I, I love things that are a bit strange and when you can actually see them for real you can you can make them you can you can make them so you, you can you can make it into something i think you can make it into something quite believable as a television mm. show one of the things that i would like is um so something so similar in the same vein as your two fisherman ideas sort of like supernatural yeah but except it'd be complete two completely completely different people who traveled all over the world to sort of to places where they um but they were a bit shit at what they did yeah. right and uh, they were they went to places that were like that were definitely free to go to. Yeah. Like um, there's a place in the and one place they end up is in Scotland, and they end up just about twelve miles away from where I used to live. There is a little um area, um on the way to um on the way to a place called Colleen Castle, which is called Electric Bray. Um, and basically you 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 drive down past you you drive down around this corner and there's a little stone slab and it's got some writing on it and it's called the electric bray and people and you always see people just outside of it and it's just a road it's just part of a road there's nothing else about it and people stop there all the time because what happens is is that if you put your car into if you if you put your car into neutral or if you if you take off the handbrake it looks like you're going uphill is that a real going, place? Yes, yeah, a real place. Yeah, yeah. So, so it looks like you're going like it's yeah. not. So like you're going downhill, but it actually looks like you're going uphill. That's weird. Just, it just reminds uh -huh. me of Father Ted. Yeah. yeah. 
it's, 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 an, it's, a, it's apparently it's an optical illusion, but people think it's how it's, it's something to do with like a, the magnet. It is the magnetic, magnetic fields, I think. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So they go and check this kind of place out. That and again because they've got no money whatsoever, there's just like they just they're just talk, talking about this really shit roadside attraction, <laughs> and they sort of um, they sort of end and then at one point they get asked to go and visit the Pine Barrens over in uh, in in New Jersey. Yeah. And sort of and they had people uh, and it's going to kind of go into like. Um, trying to find a Jersey Devil type thing because yeah. it's, uh, because that's kind of where because they're trying to basically try and do things that involve no money <laughs> yeah and they um, they basically just they end up getting lost in those woods and they compl- and they don't find the Jersey Devil at all but like they um, they come across some sort of hole in the ground mm. that leads them like that that sort of leads them down into like nowhere mm. but it just keeps going and going and he, they, they just they just can't and then at the end, the end it just can't they can't go any further okay yeah it's like it's, it's i didn't th- it's basically just a but like i wanted it to kind of be like either like a television show or a film yeah it sounds shit at the same time but i just want to i think i, th- I wanted it to end up i wanted it to start off really shit but end up being really frightening yeah i like that yeah <laughs> That makes sense. Isn't there a story about like a great big is uh, to do with the Jersey Devil and a great big hole in the in, in the ground or something like that? Oh, there's like a like a like a lake with a bottomless yes. hole in it or something. Yeah, that's um in, in that's, that same plane, the Pine Barrens. Yes, yeah, like. James Ross did the Legend of the Blue Hole. Yeah, but it's about it's about a lake. Yeah, um, in the Pine Barrens, but I'm talking about a place. That I'm yeah. just talking about a, just a giant mm. hole in the ground that's got nothing. Those in Those are it. always really spooky. Like mm. I, I like I like things like that. Yeah, As they keep on. It's like they're cooking, but it's like they're going into the center of the earth. Yeah. But, mm. and but they're like they they just can't go any further, but they keep on wanting to, mm. and yeah, they start. They could basically like um. It's kind of as far as I've got. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean the thing is, it's it was a difficult pitch this week. Um, normally like they're very like I thought this would be easy mm-hmm. because the Blair Witch thing was such an like an open-ended thing but the problem is it's very difficult i think with the jaws one it was very spe- specific yeah you know and the take a bad movie and make it good whereas with this pitch it's like i think it was almost too vague for us to really for any of us to really hone in yeah. on a great idea mm-hmm. um but if you're watching the youtube version of this if you liked any of our pitches let us know which one you thought was the best if you've seen any of these films if you watch them on our recommendation if you end up checking them out if you liked them or didn't like them let us know um if uh, for whatever reason you watched the borderlands and didn't like it because you have atrocious film taste um tell us immediately if you watched uh, the hs2 and thought it was a masterpiece uh, you have me to thank so thank you very yeah. much me but it's, it's, it's the two. HS2 has one one good section in it, but it the is, it is worth watching yeah, all the garbage it is. Yeah. It is. Um So yeah, thanks uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Thanks once again that's to that's oh. uh, that's just Tom's phone talking. Um, thank you very much to uh, the usual guys who are joining me again. All right, his, all the right. Ghost Train crew, uh, the uh, engineers and uh, ticket takers and what have you. Who's the ride operator? Oh, it's me! <laughs> so what's, what's the theme next week, Jacob? I'm not going to say what the theme is next week, but I'll tell you it's going to be something a little bit different and uh, perhaps uh, even unexpected. So you can look forward to that. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Sorry this one has been a bit late, but there were some scheduling issues. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, talk. And we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye!